I saw the and uh, end of your live stream. So when I was going to the Starbucks, <laughs> I noticed that there's a line and I'm like, this was like around <laughs> 10. And I'm like, well, if I'm going to be sitting in, uh, if I'm going to be sitting in the line, then I might as well listen to your live stream. So I saw the, nice. the, the end of your live stream. Cool, cool. Yeah, it looks so like day. we are live. Uh, what's up, everybody? This is John from Coding Addict, and welcome to another web dev power hour oh, wow. live stream. Power hour. Oh, yeah. And as oh, yeah, always, I'm yeah. joined by Mr. Paul Bratlovsky, the developer advocate for the <laughs> greatest CMS ever oh, created. Oh. Yep, product. Strappy. Oh. I'm the mastermind behind uh, the YouTube channel Coding After Thirty. The channel. Now the most is... amazing channel ever made. <laughs> Coding After Thirty. Yeah, it's amazing uh, everywhere. Yeah, just today I was watching Paul's. Uh, <laughs> I, I ended yeah. up watching, well, listening and watching Paul's live stream yeah. at. The, well, I was in line in Starbucks. So yeah, uh, if you want some cool content. Like, for example, how you need to learn, how you need to set up the LinkedIn and everything. Yeah, so check out his channel, Coding After 30, and I'll give him word finally. Yeah, the best part about my Coding After 30 channel is I get messages like this. Man, I love John Smilga. He's awesome. And then it's like, say hello to him next time you see him. I'm like, wait, this is my channel. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> no, people like love you. Like, it's so funny. And it's just like... I'm like the, the, it's like, I'm like that vehicle to like, yeah, it's so, it's just, it's so good. But the comments are always good. Yeah. I mean, and I, I know why, cause like, I mean, you do amazing stuff. So it, it's definitely well warranted, but it's just funny. Thank um, you. Thank you. I've, I've, my uh, wife gave me big lecture how every time you say something nice, I just switch the topics and she's like, well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's. So I'm 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 getting better. I'm I'm, I'm getting better at uh, at accepting I mean, the the positive comments. So thank you. I mean, if it makes you feel better. I don't tell you this stuff because I like you. I tell you this stuff because you actually created a lot of great stuff, and it, so many people benefited. And, you know, so regardless, like I think it's warranted. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Um, yeah, so let's check out. I guess yeah, we were like, what's what's new in your week? I guess let's start with with the most most straightforward. Um, what's new like, in Strappy World? So Strappy is like a lot of cool stuff. Uh, we just did the live stream. Um, I'm really actually excited. Um, we are going to be at some point releasing uh, Strappy Cloud, and I know that I talked to you about this before, and I know a lot of people who uh, may not be kind of like comfortable with deploying stuff or just don't want to deal with the issues that come with that. So now you'll be able to just run, uh, like create your application locally, but with like literally like clicking next, 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 I'll be able to deploy it to the cloud, uh, which is amazing. So any, you know, difficulties that people had, like, well, how do you deploy to Heroku? How do you deploy to like here and there? It's, it's all going to go away because you'll just have one place. So I'm like really, really excited for that feature myself. Um, and then also I've been jumping into Remix and really enjoying it because um, it's kind of like the new kid on the block. It's fun. And I'm kind of also saw someone share a project that they made with Remix and Strappy. And I was like, wow, that's actually a pretty cool combination as you two develop like well, super fast, super easy. And it's like, you know, like oh, you know, I do free thing now, but if you do free thing and you do the same with obviously with Next.js. And strappy and remix and strappy but i was just like wow this is kind of cool so i'm kind of doing that thing right now what you been up to uh nothing to tell honestly mostly as like uh most of the time just been busy with moving we're like we need to sell stuff we need oh, to yeah. order u box and whatever and that's just since i'm a very like when it like i think the only two things where i don't procrastinate is the workouts and the coding and rest of it is kind of like if i can do it next tomorrow i will and kind of for yeah. me, for example, ordering a U box took me a week <laughs> because I was literally oh tomorrow, 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 and whatever. And that's kind of I guess the one suggestion I can make to people if you have the same situation. The first one is uh like I for me what works is just schedule like let's say tomorrow morning the first thing I do and then I don't basically move out of the spot 
unless it's done kind of otherwise i mean it, it, it you always will find an excuse and whatever so yeah that that kind of worked for me so uh just yeah busy selling moving and everything else and as far as work uh, just uh i'm um, i'm adding some content to the node course basically i'm adding the the back end for the for the one of the projects just to showcase how the front end works and everything so and then before we leave nice. there's going to be still uh more stuff i'll re-record some parts of the react course because of the react 18 there's a little bit different setup and stuff like that so uh that's basically going to be the plan and uh i have today two questions but i think we're going to start with uh with just going through the chat and then uh and then at some point we can jump in and whatever not i can answer those ones yeah i was gonna say i just saw two comments that popped out one is like the big exchanged uh pets because you <laughs> yeah, also yeah, have yeah. a black cat yeah which yeah. i'm like yeah now all the cool cool kids have black have cats the black them. cat yes if you yeah and then uh when are you coming out with a workout video yeah there you go that's another <laughs> great one I love that well one. i can tell you <laughs> like as far as youtube i guess it's smarter to have a fitness channel than than the coding one uh definitely need I to think, do less work to grow subscribers but uh really but, i don't know i don't know oh come on it's, it's <laughs> way more like um yeah no 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 but we're, we're i'm not i'm not coming out with a fitness channel not anytime soon i i don't know i don't know i don't know i i'm, I'm skeptical with some of these fitness channels it's like i don't know if you're fit or you're just young because i remember when i was in my 20s <laughs> you know what like i could eat burgers all day long i was just perfect you know so but I do like I do want to like I, I like those comparisons though of like the way you know as far as coding and 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 basically working out or fitness because there are some like a lot of similarities in a sense that um, like a bunch of things don't change but it's just constant you know this like oh this is the new way whatever and then there's constant things that always have worked and always will work. And if you stick to them, you, you'll be fine. But it's just a lot of this noise because people do need to create content. They need to, need exactly. to be relevant and whatever. So, yeah, all these diets and whatever and, and, and everything else. Yeah, we have exchange pets. We have a bunch of, um, uh, bunch of, bunch of uh, people that we know really well. We have Jake. We have Andrew's back. Andrew was like busy with 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 work or, or or life and now he's back so it's it's awesome to see you here andrew uh we have tammy tammy is back as well thank you for for all the messages tammy about uh florida and everything yes i i we we are taking all all of, all of the things in consideration and everything uh and then i saw one pretty much we right away can get to one question we can uh we have uh i'm 33 can i start learning coding Not absolutely Not if late. there's it's uh, if, if 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 we can make a very short <laughs> not true <laughs> so, just saying that you know it's, it's no no <laughs> like i'm just joking i like to joke with that question because i literally started at 36 so you're already younger than i am uh and uh definitely not too late uh, for sure for sure not too late just... yeah for me it's also like because i i didn't start right away I basically like it was i open up some site i think i remember i built some very basic like it's similar to the free code camp but it wasn't i think it was code academy where, where essentially they guide you how to set up like the most basic web page with like uh, one title and one uh, one image and i remember doing that and then again like one year went by and again i did something and then now looking back my only regret is i didn't start it sooner that's it that's there there's people who learn to code yeah. at 50 when they switch uh this is something that i actually recently heard on syntax the the greatest podcast ever uh, as far as yes. web development how like a guy approached them in a, in a, in 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 a conference who like learned to code at 50 something more and he's just and they keep saying it's all about the mindset it has nothing to do yeah. with your age whatever it says in a passport it's about your mindset because one of the reasons why they always say well yeah it's you know that there's this idea push that you can only do it when you're young because a lot of it is in the beginning that you need to spend time you need to catch up you know you need to learn what like how yeah. to make a site how to do css so there's just a 
bunch of kind of knowledge that you need to acquire in order, you know, for you to start moving in order for you to start, let's say, building. And when you're younger, it's just easier because you have no, you know, commitments, or whatever, right? If yeah, you're, not, if you're, not, like, if you're 20 and live in your mom's basement and, and, you know, you're, you just, whatever. The good old days. <laughs> yeah, you can sit all day. So of course you can get those whatever hours, even though if you're messing around, uh, you know, you can get a bunch of uh, time to, to, to actually spend on it. But it, like, it, it somehow has always, it goes to like, oh, you can only do it if you're young. And then that's total like BS. It's not the case. It's actually, if you're older, you're much better at like, uh, if you're structuring your time and mm -hmm. making sure that, uh, you know, the time that I have, I'll actually spend on, 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 on useful stuff, not just like sitting around and, 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 and spending on uh, social media or whatever. So, uh, absolutely no, though you can, you, you can do it at 33 and that's actually, you're very, Agreed. yeah, very, very, uh, young. <laughs> well, what, what I was going to add for a while, like I used to feel like, oh, I'm too old because I'm going to interviews and I'm getting turned out and I'm like literally thinking it's because I'm too old. I'm too old. That's why I didn't want an older person. I realized it wasn't that I was too old. It's that I wasn't qualified for the job based on the skills that I had at the time. And then once I got the skills that show like, hey, I have value to bring to the company, all of a sudden, not, now it's not an excuse. People are like, oh, we'll, we'll give you a chance. So I think it's just like getting, doing the work and getting to a point where you meet the experience that people are looking for. And I feel like sometimes for beginners, they might underestimate what that is. You know what I mean? And so, but it's definitely possible. Um, I've seen, you know, outside of myself, you know, getting, breaking into the field, like late in my thirties, I'm 42 now, by the way, and, you know, seeing other people in the community in their thirties, uh, and so on, uh, breaking into the field. So it's definitely not just me and John, you know, people who've changed their lives just from like what you hear from people that took your courses and stuff. So. And also yeah. not to repeat, like, which again, this is one of those things where the same, like I just talked about fitness community or whatever you will like. When we, when we, when I think always about our, our, our live stream podcast, it is a lot about like repeating the same stuff. So what I'm yeah. about to say, I've probably said already 50 times, but in general, like, uh, when we're talking about the age and the coding and everything, it's not like you can do it at any age. There's no, there's no real difference or whatever. And it's just about the, the, the stuff that you need to do in order to get there. And, uh, like you also need to understand that you bring your life experience to the coding. So whatever you have been doing that, that's also really relevant. It's, it's not just, you know, about the coding skills. Yeah. And I, I talked to another gentleman recently on discord, um, that I met through like my, our work community and I was talking to him and I was like complaining cause look at here I am. I'm like 42. I'm like, oh, I switched careers. It was like, so like, and I also forget there's like a lot of people older than I am and I have to be mindful of that. And he's like, you're just a baby. He's like, he switched careers in his early fifties into development. And now he uh, works at a company where he's actually not only the lead developer, but he works on the hiring part. And what he literally said to me, he's like, it wasn't easy, but like, if you commit to it and you have a strong enough, why? to motivate yourself or to just do even if you don't feel motivated to do the work that is required you're going to get there and so he had like like the way he described it to me he's like look it was in the midst of covid like stuff was happening i literally needed to do this to be able to get another job uh to make myself marketable and he like committed it took him like like I almost two years so some people say oh two years is such a long time but that not to being able to get a job but i was just like kind of like, you know, uh, humbled by it because I was like, oh man, like there, like there's people, if you have a strong enough reason why you're going to do it and you obviously want to create a plan and a roadmap and, you know, understand what you want to do and what problems you want to solve to make sure that you're learning the right thing. Cause one of the common mistakes I made is I tried to learn everything under the sun. And it's not only until I decided to like stick with react and make it my thing that I made progress because there's too much stuff to learn. Can't learn everything. Yeah. And like, also when, when you decide to be a developer, you will be a lifelong long learner. And that's one of the things that you kind of, that's also a skill in its own. Right. So for example, for me, like now that I have spent so much time on doing the research 
for pretty much anything web development related, I also viewed like any other like challenge in my life differently. Instead of like I used to be before that, I was like used to just throw up my hands and say, "I well, I don't know." And now, like, give you a silly example. Like, I my the battery on my on my car ran out, and I have the basically in order to open it up, I I have uh, the automatic key, right? So I cannot like I f- first I'm looking at it like where I'm gonna put like how I'm gonna open up the car and open up the hood if I cannot like open the car because the battery doesn't. So the first thing I do, I go to YouTube and I search how like. And that's it. You watch the video and there's actually a way how you there there is a way how you can get to like basically you get the manual key out and then there's you know you can get it to, and yeah but before that I probably would be like no that's it I'm done I don't know and now it's like okay this is the challenge how do I fix it and that's and there's internet <laughs> like when it comes to internet you can find pretty much anything so as long as you are interested in it as long as you're you know, happy to, to, to be in that student mindset all the time. I don't see any, any problems whatsoever. I know we're, we're probably going to spend an hour on this because you can keep adding and adding and adding, but yeah, long story short, no, you're not, uh, you're not too old. Um, okay. So we have two, one about the login, very interesting one about the CSS. John, how do you get the CSS you use for your apps? I kind of think there's a download package and then you can customize as you want. So, uh, I do use my default setup. Like I, I will probably, uh, what's that? You see, I old time keep, I'll probably die on that hill or whatever the saying goes. So, uh, yeah, I'm a big believer in, in the default styles pretty much for me. They have solved most of my issues, like as far as CSS. So, I have the set of default styles and then I already have pretty typical setup how I work. So, uh, yeah, like I cannot suggest bootstrap or whatever, because I don't use it anymore. And, uh, I haven't worked with Tailwind CSS extensively, but if you're interested how I set up the general styles, which saved me a lot of time in the long run, then yeah, there's a video with the default styles in my YouTube and everything. So that that's for me. What about you? How, how do you approach CSS? I love Tailwind now and I just, oh my God, I don't even know if I should say this because people are going to judge me, but the cool part about like using a Tailwind project and Tailwind package is because then you could look up other websites that use Tailwind and I'll literally be like, oh, I like how this component looks and I'll go inspect element, copy the component, uh, the elements, and then just paste it into my code and like majority of the styling would work out of the box outside of the custom stuff. So I was just like, ah, you know, this is cool. And uh, I'm kind of saying it jokingly, but I feel like as a beginner, that's actually a great way to kind of learn how people structure their HTML and like what kind of classes they apply to their CSS uh, would tail into work when you're starting out. And so um, like for me, it's been like a changer using Tailwind. So I like, I love Tailwind so much, um, you know, it, it's, it's really good. And do you use the, what's the name of that? Tailwind UI or you construct your own? Um, Mostly. Well, outside of copy and pasting from like templates that I like, so mm. to, I do support the people that make them. So I, I will go to mm. the I'll buy the template, but sometimes like, I'm even like, but the fact that you can just look with the inspector to see what they did and get some ideas how to do it, uh, it's kind of good. So I like that approach, um, but you know, like, cause I want, so I don't want to spend too much time on CSS because I my action job. So I love the fact that you to build your layout or CSS, and uh, the before mentioned uh, method of doing it allows you to borrow people's inspiration and put in your code uh, easily. Uh, but I also like the Tailwind UI. It's actually like like they're like paid. Uh, template they have is amazing and it's not cheap but like if i were to build the proper website i would just use that um also oh, on, on like theme work forest work. they have uh with with already tailwind yeah 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 i mean like uh, yeah <laughs> yeah like uh, i literally i looked uh, uh i'm gonna get judged so hard i looked up tailwind <laughs> uh, templates 
and I really like went live preview and I went uh, with the inspector be like, yeah, the daylight, all right, this is kind of cool. It, you know, and just cause they're using Tailwind and I'm using Tailwind. So like basically general, you can get like all the, the classes that they used anyway from yes, the, yes. okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, no, 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 it's theme, not theme, theme f- for learning purposes, for learning purposes. <laughs> Theme you know? forest um, is, 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 is really like, um, I'm always kind of, uh, impressed. Like first move, how quickly they kind of switched to Figma that one, I was like, oh, wow, they have a bunch of already, uh, you know, Figma templates. And now knowing that there's a tailwind. Yeah. That's a, that's a, that's a huge, um, it's definitely going to be your CSS faster. Yeah. One interesting thing I heard, I don't know if anybody else, or maybe you heard it, uh, people using, uh, Webflow to do mockups. So they don't really care about like, you know, making their website with it, but they just like to easily be able to use Webflow to create the layout and then copy the HTML and whatever that comes out like with CSS. With CSS. And I was like, I even never thought of it, uh, of doing that. But um, I don't know if you heard anybody using it in that case. No, I actually like myself, I have never used the Webflow to tell honestly. I just, it just never, came up so i no, yeah, I, don't yeah, know. I, I, I know it's a very popular option for 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 many developers but i haven't like i haven't done any, any work myself. yeah i never like i haven't really looked into it but i thought it was kind of interesting for me i'm like tailwind is the way to go and the fact that the documentation is so good and there's so many examples with using tailwind uh even if you don't count the method i just mentioned um and <laughs> What I like about it is like, so I'll give you this example. So like a lot of times, like you start using Tailwind, you're like, you just don't know how to do. So you spend a lot of time looking stuff up on the documentation. But after a while or after reputation, you kind of memorize those things. And next time you build a website, it just makes it so much easier. And I'm not at that point yet, but I already feel like I'm going to get to a point where I'll be able to create any layout I need to just using Tailwind classes. And I just love the feeling of knowing that I don't have to mess with CSS. With that being said, though, like if you're starting out, definitely learn CSS, learn SAS, be able to take a basic mock-up and translate it into code. But once you know the CSS, uh, using Tailwind to speed up your workflow, 100%, 100%. And um, you were the one who actually uh, sold me on Tailwind because at first I was like, eh, like whatever. And then I got their uh, design course that you mentioned. Um, and I was like, ah, oh, these guys are smart. Oh, by the way, I got it. I, I, I found the disc it? where it was. I, nice. I lost it. And now finally I got it. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah but um, Tailwind is, is definitely, and you, and you see it, it kind of, in my opinion, has taken over the industry, if we like to use these kind of big words, because you see more and more and more people like kind of um, swearing by it, I guess. And, and yeah. that's that's really good. For me, again, the the, the only negative is that I don't, it's like, I, I have a very hard time picturing adding Tailwind in the new course because for me, like, as you're writing, let's say, okay, next JS, right? Um, you have need, you, I need to write so many classes that by the end of the course, it's literally going to be a Tailwind, Tailwind course. And uh, understandably so, people have complained prior to that in the React course about the bootstrap. So I'm kind of like, eh, I, I'm not sure. So... Uh, we have one more from Jake, and but this one is the Jake. I need to ask you a question: Is it a React project or JavaScript? And by the way, uh, FYI, I can right away say that uh, Paul is going to be able to plug in Strappy here very nicely. So, <laughs> yeah. like, let's go with your answer first. <laughs> but pretty much, I, I, I hard work. I, I, I <laughs> that bet that I bet that Paul would like plug Strappy even when I'm talking about moving. He would be like, you know what? Yeah, you no, know what so you helps could manage, you with moving. You could, yeah, you could manage <laughs> all the content that you want to track uh, for your moving and within <laughs> yeah. Strappy. And then if you do need to make an API call to get the data that you need, just in case you forgot something, you could, of course, do that. Yeah, no, seriously. Yeah. Look at the authentication, by the way. As a, as a, <laughs> um, by the way, our next question is about authentication. But if you if you want like if you want to see very very professional Paul in action, just go to his LinkedIn and check out one of his posts where he did in um about it's one of your latest ones where you were on the top and then there was two developers i guess from strap yeah it must be it was oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah version three yeah, to yeah, version four yeah yeah yeah, yeah. migration stream yeah, you can just go yeah. to strap uh, uh, yeah youtube channel yes. and check it if out if you want to see a very professional paul and then then he's, he's top notch 
So <laughs> uh, sp speaking of like just uh, so remix, I just quickly take off the conversation since we already talked about Strapi. Remix is a full stack React um, framework. So you in theory like could build a back end with it as well. And of course, here I am. I'm too lazy to do that. So I'm like, I'm just gonna use Remix to get my data from Strapi. And it literally, uh, I did a stream. It took me like three minutes to set up Strapi, and now I have like an API that just works that I could customize if I want to. And so uh, even though with Remix, I could do all that backend logic myself, I'm just like, yeah, I'm just going to use Strapi uh, for authentication, for getting content and data. So, um, but I've been like this for like years using Strapi. So Strapi and I, you know. When was the last time you sang happy birthday? I think my internet is a little buggy. I missed like uh, what you said. You missed the Sorry. question. When was the last time when you sang happy birthday? No. Oh my God, hold on a second. Let me. Uh, no, no, hold on. Like my uh, internet was going weird. Uh, hold on. Let me like do something. It's part of my fault. All right. Sorry about that. Go ahead. One more time. That's yeah. Like, no, no, no. It's also yeah. like in here, com like complaints that my one is slow. So I guess we're both in the. Same boat. What? When was the last time you sang "Happy Birthday"? Oh, when's the last Did time I sang "Happy Birthday"? Actually, not long ago. Not too long ago. <laughs> to it was my, uh, <laughs> no, not to myself. I didn't sing it to myself. Come on, like I. First of all, I'm not like that. I, don't, I can. Oh gosh. <laughs> Oh, no, I sent it to my baby nephew. I don't sing. I don't like for adults. Like, I, don't need know, a I know, I know, we have, out of here. We, we have, okay. The reason why I'm messing with you. And by the way, yes, it's a joke. Of course, I'm just imagine, imagine me sitting <laughs> on my own with a, with the whatever cake and singing so, happy birthday, dear John. So someone used to tell me a joke. There's some truths. <laughs> so let's see. It's like, is there a time where you wish you sang happy birthday? To no, no, first of all, you like I'm a, I'm a time. horrible, I'm a horrible singer. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sing, but we have, um, and, and hopefully I'm not, uh, uh, butchering the name, but we have on Keita Berman. And it's her birthday, so happy, 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 happy birthday. And Ankita is super, yes. super um, supportive. She's like in, in course questions and in, in any other mm -hmm. platform. So I'm wishing you a happy, happy, happy birthday. And, and I'm so glad that you're joining the chat and that uh, you enjoy the content. Um, yeah, happy birthday. No, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, but we're not gonna sing because we're 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 horrible singers and we don't want to lose the the, the five five that's viewers that, that we have. Yeah, yeah, or they're gonna the, be or like, the what is future. I made a song as a joke that I sang and I posted, and some people thought it was serious. I'm like, are you kidding me? Why would someone post that as a serious song? But you know what, yeah. Ankita, that what what Paul can do, he's he's making music now, so he can. Uh, devote one of his latest songs as 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 a birthday gift to you because he's he's, <laughs> he's he's definitely check out his channel because or a Twitter feed I guess yeah I put it on Twitter yeah. feed it's uh I I, I def definitely my goal is like so so here's like a pro tip so when I was learning to code I was trying to learn everything and it's kind of impossible to learn everything and I only really started making progress when I committed to JavaScript and React and it's kind of like the same. Uh, path I'm following with music. Instead of trying to be good at everything, I'm just like, I'm just going to play 80s like music and I'm recreate like my favorite 80s music songs that I like. So I tried, there's this song, I think it's by, um, oh my God, I can't believe it. it's like my favorite band and I don't remember it. It's that song, Every Breath You Take. So I tried to make my own rendition of it. I don't know. It's all right, I guess, uh, you know, uh, but yeah, 80s music is the greatest. No, Everybody. no, no. I, I like, I like. Paul's how, how I like that Paul is 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 is, is tackling the the music hobby and, and posting it as well. It's yeah. it's, it's really cool. Yeah. To see. Well, you know what? I always tell people learn in public, um, be, and it's really important to kind of share what you're doing uh, because if you let's say if you're learning something and it takes a year to get to where you're going and you did it in secret and nobody knows when you get out, you still have to build your network. You still have to be your community. You still have to find like you know create kind of these networks where you could like 
people know what you do and where to go to like find a job. And I feel like if you right from the beginning, you know, start building that community, start building that experience open in the public. By the time you get to a point where it's time for you to go on interviews, people are already going to know who you are. I just don't know if that's going to work the same with music. Like, I don't think a year from now, people are going to be like, oh, Paul, like you should write this record for us. Like, but, but with coding that hundred percent works. I know a lot of people that been discovered through their content that they've been sharing or putting out like on Twitter, you know, or LinkedIn and stuff like that. No, it's definitely the case for, for, for a variety of reasons. First of all, yeah, you're going to get some, uh, for uh, some jerks, like, don't get me wrong. That's, that's one of the kind of probably scariest things in the beginning because you think like, mm -hmm. oh my God, everybody's going to be, be, but you'll be surprised. It's actually, yes, there is this, I don't know, one out of hundred probably is a jerk. Yes. You, you'll be sometimes annoyed by the comments. Yes. But like 99%, like 99 of like percent of people are actually really cool and they're going to be very supportive. And so you'll be surprised. Like, trust me, like that's one of the things where I always, yes, it's just that jerk ruins for everybody. And that's why it starts like, oh, like I, whatever I'm the, 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 I've lost my faith in humanity and all this. Stuff. It's not true. It's just, yes. There's just some difficult people. That's just the way it is. Um, so I definitely suggest if you can, however it is, whether that's setting up a Twitter profile and, and posting, you know, your, your comment, like you, like your coding journey, at least like taking notes or whatever, or it's starting a, uh, YouTube channel or writing blog posts or whatever. And yes, everybody is, is telling you what's the, what's the correct band that, uh, it's actually the police. Yeah. And everything. Yeah. Awesome. So um, Jake has question where you'll be able to plug in Strapi. So wait, no, wait a second. I was going to even beat you to that by saying <laughs> you probably not going to think that I could plug in Strapi when we're talking about writing blog posts and because it has nothing to do with building an application. But if you want to build experience uh, through writing, and I think like it's really good to do. And I, by the way, not the greatest writer. And I actually learned through by working at Strappy and they have a thing called right for the community. And I'll actually throw that in the YouTube uh, for you to check it out. But uh, they have um, the section called Gui guidance and they have actually example of how to structure your uh, blog post and article with a great example. And that's something I started to do. And I started to write like articles and people like, man, your articles are so good. Well, now you know where I got the template. Um, I literally got it from right from the community of Strappy and I started posting stuff on dev.to on Strappy website. And what's cool is like to this point, like if you're starting out and you want to get some experience, it doesn't have to be Strappy. There's plenty of companies that love uh, when uh, their articles about, let's say like how to deploy an app to Netlify or, you know, um, how to use Remix or how to get data with Next.js, whatever. And you could write a blog post and share that. And now you're positioning yourself as like a authority in whatever that uh, thing is. And over time you could build a reputation and like, it definitely does count. And like, I mean, I could easily uh, the stats by saying, like, what people find out on that you create content on YouTube, do they think less of you or more of you in the tech space? Mm, sorry, repeat that because they're like the uh, first part is the yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah no worries. I, I didn't hear the say, first um, part of the question. Yeah, like what I was gonna say is that when people find out that you create content for YouTube, do they think like less of you or more for you when it comes to like getting hired? Depends. Finding depends, opportunities. Depends. Depends. Yeah. Depends. Depends. Uh, simply because there are like uh, so. Let's say every time again. Well, first of all, it depends. Are we talking about interviews or are we talking about general developers? Uh, most of developers that I uh, think uh, is, is, is what I've like talked to, they're just curious about how it works. Most of the questions like, hey, how do you would, set this one up? And from the standpoint of actually getting hired. And getting, getting hired. Like, it, 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 you're it, aware of you. It, it depends on the sense that when the channel was smaller, people looked at you differently in a way they're, they're like, okay, so he's just putting out the content because he wants to be involved right. in community, whatever. It was easier to sell. As your channel grows, 
you start like getting basically on oh, he's just doing you know he's just doing it for views uh, yeah. and whatever so then it kind of flips where you need to be That's like no like look there is no like learn to code in in, in one week and earn six figures video right so you kind of need right. to like go like go backwards and be like listen i just I still do this because i enjoy the, the the part of creating something and just sharing what i've learned so once you flip that then it's okay but but they people have you know kind of i don't know misconception i guess or whatever yeah. that that it's all about like you don't care about the code and and, and ju it's just about like getting the views and it's hard to explain to people that you know again if i would want to make know, money on youtube i probably wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't do coding it's not it's that's not like real. what i try to tell to people it blows my mind like and this is actually the unfortunate part of YouTube. There's so many great creators and there's also people that are doing it for views, which is nothing wrong with that, but it does set this weird thing uh, because the content that does well for views is terrible advice for like having like everyday people get hired, but it's just pretty awesome because it's highly searchable on YouTube. Uh, and it's kind of interesting that way because some of the best advice that I give where you talk about hard work, setting the right expectations, that it's not going to take you two weeks or three months or whatever to get hired. Like those are the least watched the videos. But if you do like some clickbaity thing, how like you take Python and you could have a supercar like in three months, like people <laughs> like, oh my God, I, I, I got to check this out and listen to that. And that's kind of like interesting how that works. No, yeah. no, no, it, it's definitely for sure. And, and we can talk all day. That That's why I always like, I, I will at every chance i'll promote the channel not because you know but the one that i found find useful if i look back you know when i was like just starting out of course it changes as you you know progress you know by yourself first of all when you start producing content you start consuming less other people's content it's just a reality it's nothing to do with oh i just don't like him or no it's just simply like you're like you you have to spend so much time on creating that content that there's not that much to consuming it but i always look like i've always tried to at every chance promote um not just channels people whatever where it's not about like the amount of views or followers they get it's about the 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 quality of the content of how useful and yes that's that's unfortunately going to be the case that you know the 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 the, the useful stuff is i wouldn't say boring it's it's not like let's say exciting you know like if i would if i were to tell you okay um uh, this is how you're going to become a developer it's one thing but if i tell you oh this is how you can make million dollars like which one is going to get more views? yeah exactly like, i mean let, let's be honest right is it <laughs> that's just the reality so it's like that joke know. was like they had like eight minute abs and it was like five minute abs and then there's like three minutes <laughs> ab, but then it's like you don't even need to do abs you're just gonna have a six pack no matter what it's like all bs it's all bs like i've Eight minute abs doesn't work if you eat like crap, you know, you, there's just certain things you have to do. And the same thing with coding, whatever the hype is, you still need to do the code and spend majority of your time in your code editor, building stuff yourself from scratch to get that experience. Yeah. But it's also like, it's, 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 uh, but one thing that I try to avoid, and, and I'm not saying that, 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 um, uh, like people do it or whatever. I always try it. Like, it's also on the person you need to somehow package it. And again, I'm not saying you don't need to like uh, trade your values, but you need to be like, there There has to be a way like how you can uh, commute that message. You also, we, you cannot always just say, well, okay, people are like this and they don't want to listen. I don't know. It's just, you know, getting through and understanding that maybe, you know, it's not about the, the, the amount of, of people. It's about the quality that you provide and the connection that you get back. Because yeah. it's, it's not, I can honestly say that the biggest things is, is, uh for me it, the the it the, those numbers never like they don't mean literally anything what they what, what what youtube channel has helped me to do is just meet people that i have you know common interests come common kind of uh yeah common interests i guess most like that's the most proper word whether that's like li like real people in in la for example here or it's 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 on virtual space so yeah but three minute abs yeah <laughs> <laughs> those are the best videos yeah that, yeah out there uh, yeah that, yeah it's uh okay actually at least i had an interesting question like do you recommend boot camps yeah so let's let's i guess address that one and then we'll swing back to jake um i 
it depends. To tell honestly, again, without being mean towards bootcamp or whatever, I personally would not suggest. But at the same time, if you can afford it, if let's say that money is kind of, you know, you like, it's not a big deal for you. I mean, what is it? 10, 20, 12,000, whatever. Like 15,000, Or it's 15 or No, I mean, yeah, it's hard to say. No, it's no, expensive, no. yeah. I don't know, in 2022... Again, it really depends on like what, like if you can be committed by yourself, like, like you don't need somebody to, to push you, you can learn and study yourself. I would not go to the bootcamp because at 2022, with all due respect, like I have, I don't know, like every program for the, like any, every pro bootcamp program, but I think that you can learn most of it yourself. And the biggest selling point that they have is that they will, basically get the job for you which is not true they won't you like yeah. i have many students who finished boot camps again i'm not going to name them and i'm not saying that every boot camp is bad there's please understand the distinction but i've had many students who <clears throat> finished the boot camp finished the react part and they say that uh, you know the course was more useful and they got most out of it and there's the, this idea that somebody's going to get the job for you it's not true you will still have to do all those things yeah. yourself you'll still have and to go I and watch uh, sorry uh, the pause video about the setting up the link that you'll have to do those steps regardless. So at 2022, I wouldn't, I personally I was gonna, wouldn't. Yeah. I was going to say, um, the type of people like, cause I know people that went to boot camp and finished it and graduated and got a job. So there are some, uh, you know, cases where that happens, but the question I will ask, I think those are the same people that if they took the self-taught route would also get jobs because it really not the boot camp, but it's the person that's doing the boot camp, or it's the person that's taking the self, uh, taught route. Now, now for me, what I would say, like, especially now with the recession coming on and all this other stuff going, if you could hold on to your money and not give it to somebody else, I think that's a way smarter thing to do. So it could be like, you know what, like try to do it on your own. And I'll share a little bit of my personal story. So I was dealing with uh, imposter syndrome really hard and I was, you know, studying on my own and I was like, man, maybe boot camp is the answer. Maybe boot camp is the answer. And so I said to myself, you know what, why don't you just give yourself a little bit more time, the self-taught route, be a little bit more proactive, go to more meetups and, and you know, like try for another six months to see if you could do it by yourself. And I ended up getting a job as a self-taught developer without a boot camp. And I realized is that if I did not listen to myself and like really tried to get it down on my own and went to boot camp, like it still doesn't guarantee that I was going to get hired, but it does guarantee that I'm going to be out $15,000. Now, if like, but at the same time, there are people that succeed, but I really think it's the person and not the like, you know, there is no magic formula. You know what I mean? No, I 100% I agree with your point. It's an excellent point. I just want to say, I, one thing that I want to add is basically, you need to look at it this way. You can spend $50 and literally become a full stack developer by five courses. Please understand that doesn't mean just watching the course. That means actively as you're watching Googling, as you're watching, but trust me, you'll still have to do that uh, yeah. in a bootcamp as well. And again, you can do it in your own pace. One of the things that people kind of uh, don't talk about it as much as they should. Again, this is not trashing bootcamps, but there's there's big mental like load when you like go from, okay, I didn't know anything about coding and now I'm doing like 60 hours of coding a week. It like, we're not robots. That's again, not to bring like some kind of workout uh, comparisons but uh, you know i learned the hard way when you like when you think that oh i don't need rest i can just do it like six seven days a week next thing you know you get an injury and you sit two months at home and you cannot do anything so it's it's i always suggest to people like you know start structuring your own path instead of you know jumping you know and starting 60 yeah. hours again if you can do it most likely you would do it regardless you yeah there's i don't think there's there, there, and, there, and yeah, just to say there are some like good boot camps, but what I would say is that if you think a boot camp is like guaranteed that you're going to get hired and you feel like it's just easy to pay money and do this thing and also I'm going to get a job, that's not how it works. Like you will still have to do like massive amount of work. So the people that I know that go to boot camps and do really well are the same people that already started learning on their own and they just feel like they 
either like to be in person in class or belong in the community, or just they have hard time starting on their own when there is no like uh, pressure of the schedule of getting things done by a certain deadline. And so some people like that more and they go to the boot camp because of that. But the reason they're succeeding is the same reason they could have succeeded just uh, taking the Udemy courses and putting in the work. It's the work behind it uh, that takes you to that next level. And I think that's important to remember. So if you are considering a boot camp, don't jump into it blindly. Like if I were to meet someone in Vegas and decide to get married, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's the same, same. You got to do your research. You got to know your partner. You, you know what? You know. Are you gonna work together? Is it yeah. gonna flow? You, <laughs> you know, know what you I didn't like? See that one coming, huh? Yeah. You didn't no, I actually I didn't did. You know either. why? You know why? <laughs> because we both have. Uh, each of us have different. Like I always compare it to to working out jujitsu and whatever. And you go to dating, um, strappy, and yeah. and and, all, strappy, and yeah. also working out. So we kind of we always. I mean, that's yeah. that's yeah, just the good. way it's going to be. No, okay. we could all laugh with dating because we all been there. We all, regardless if you're a boy or a girl, we all had that relationship. We're like ah, what was I thinking? You know, it's the same thing with boot camps. You know, you're like ah, maybe it wasn't the right one. I should have spent more time doing some research. Yeah, yeah. it's just it seems like uh, again, this is this is one of those one of those uh, kind of bigger topics where we always it's always nice to think that somebody else is taking care of this right it's always this nice idea that okay i'm giving this 15 or whatever thousand to boot camp and it's just gonna fix it everything for me yeah and the unfortunate part and that's kind of that mind like the 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 the, the roadblock in your mind that you need to get over it's not the case you'll still have to do everything it's just you know yes there's 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 good let's say boot camps that prepare a program for you that have a nice structure. So you need to do less of that, let's say, understanding because you have the instructor, you have, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the project you're going to build and all that. All of that is nice, but you need to understand that also boot camps, when they just uh, showed up when it was, I don't know, 2012 or I don't know when, but I have no idea when they started. But you know, it was one thing because there was no, not, not, not much information yeah, not out enough. there. Yeah, now there's, it's, much, it's actually opposite. You have way too much way information. Too much. You have way, way too many options and whatever. So now it's more about like deciding, okay, which, which courses I'm going to take, or like what, what path I'm going to follow. But yeah, that's why I'll, again, I'll mention last, last uh, live stream, I mentioned Natasha and her channel and she exactly when she like, he, there's one video that I would definitely want to suggest. And uh, I think I'm going to throw it here in, a, in the comments uh, that how she basically lays out 10 steps, how she learned the code. And, and it wasn't, she didn't go to bootcamp. She literally just switched the jobs, uh, meaning like she quit the job. She learned how to code through the Udemy courses and she got the job. So Nice. To say that you need to do the boot camp, no. I, I, I mean, this is the topic that again we can do episode after episode. This is kind of. I know we get we're trying to make back to Jake's question, but I gotta make like <laughs> Sharon's comment. She says, "Hey, my parents got married in Vegas after meeting in Scotland and writing letters for a few months. See, they did their research via writing the letters. They didn't just jump in in Vegas like you just show up and one day you know like after you know." Two minutes like hey let's get married uh, so research very important but let's tackle jake's question because i know we've been what, trying to do it for like past 20 yeah minutes. yeah so uh the one gotcha here that it's a uh, basically so his question is john i need to add user login functionality on a project of mine but i don't know how to do any backend is node.js a good option to add into my project or do you have any recommendation so Let's tackle there's like, <laughs> I can already see what the Paul is going to say. So I'm going to skip that. <laughs> Let me just, I know where, where the conversation is going. Now, my thing is, first of all, is Node good option? Yes. Now, do you need to learn a, like, just in order to get that? No. So here are two options. So Paul is going to give you the second option. And I'm going to give you the first option. Now, for both options, still keep in mind that if you if this is a vanilla JS application, you will have to do a little bit more acrobatics as far as the user just just checking in on a front end. Uh, unfortunately, that's the case where with the with with let's say any kind of framework, I mean they do most of the work already for you. It's as, okay. It's less lines of code, right? So if you're using Next.js or even even create a React app, 
when you're setting up such uh, user functionality, it's easier. Like with vanilla JS, you there there there's basically more work involved. Now, as far as the backend, um, I personally would not like learn Node.js just to add login functionality. I would uh, go with some kind of service, for example, auth zero, but after one, but after doing what Paul is about to suggest, because then you'll learn the mentally in the model. So I think like, it's really depends. Like, you know, if you're looking to get into backend development, like obviously you have to learn node, obviously you have to know how to do all that stuff. But if you just focused on getting and deliver, having a deliverable product where you're mostly focused on the front end and you just need to have some API functionality using a CMS and there's like plenty, I happen to love Strapi, which already has authentication, uh, like wired and included, and it make gives an easy place to manage all the content. Um, so from that standpoint, if you're just trying to go from now to delivering something to your client, I would personally go with Strapi, which I do in a lot of cases, and then spending my time working on the front end. Um, but if you are like looking to get into like, hey, I want to get into uh, backend development, then yeah, you should probably learn how to create your own solution and stuff like that. So it really depends on your goal. And uh, I know John has really good uh, Node.js course, by the way. <laughs> the no, I just to wanted to add. So basically, the reason why I would suggest Strapi first, because you will understand uh, the REST setup. So if you go yes. with, let's say, Auth0, right? Then they will just tell you like, okay, this is the lines of code you need to add, and this is the user that you're getting, and all of that is nice. If you if you want simple like response or whatever, uh, like simple solution, somewhat quickly again, depending on what is the front end you're using. But yes, like the service that already provides all the functionality, it's 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 definitely a a better option in my opinion than than learning everything yourself. However, if you go with Strapi because they also have auth, what's really cool is that you do still need to send those requests, look for responses. And this is it's definitely like why I always preach about Strapi. Uh, aside from the fact that Paul just gives me money all the time, I talk about He's it. taking my job <laughs> from me. I'm going to get fired. Unbelievable no, job. No, Paul, Paul is like sending me all the time, uh, five bucks at the time that I mentioned Strapi. You, no, you the reason think, why. You think, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. If people are going to think I'm made of money, John. Thanks. <laughs> Well, I send them nothing, well, nothing you're... except like good things, like good thoughts. I send them good thoughts. I'm like, hey, I hope you have a great day. That's, that's what I no, said, John. No, it's 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 money. Yeah. It's money, people. And, and, and I, I, have, I can. Someone from Strap is going to see this. I'd be like, what kind of side hustle Paul doing? And, you know, uh, whatever. It's a joke. It's a so joke. Um, yeah, the, the the what's cool about that is that you go through those steps, so you understand about the structure of the like proper request not just get request because that's the first thing we always learn is the get request but setting up that post request and why i'm saying that is because it's going to be a very important part uh on on on, on your future pro projects and what i would really like when the first one of the first times we talked to paul and we were just discussing so what would be your suggestion for somebody like just you know kind of trying to get a job and he's like that companies are looking for that understanding of not just the get request, but post, put, and all that. You need to understand yeah. how, how that works. And this is something I've said already a million different times, but yes, Strapi was like crucial for me to kind of like, because it's so easy when you have the server pretty much running right here and you actually see this in real time. You see, it's not just the JSON server where it's like, okay, you send it, but it's like, okay, but what is it? Is there a real user? Is there a real blog post? But there, and actually you see, Okay, I do this and then the user gets created and now I can see them. And, and so, yeah, I, I definitely, if you can set it up, I would probably start with Strapi. But then again, the, remember that your front end is also a big, big kind of, um, uh, kind of, uh, basically depending on your front end, it's going to depend on what kind of functionality you're going to have and what kind of setup. Yeah, and if you have any questions about Strap, you could reach out to me, Jake. Because um, I could. Paul is going to be you know. very happy this is, to. This is the funny story because everybody's like, "Man, you only talk about Strap because you work at Strap." What people don't get, no, no, the reason I work at Strap now is because I talk about Strap all the time before working at Strap. It's not like I work at Strap and talk about Strap. It's like no, 
I love Strappy so much that they're like, hey, this guy is going to be useful for our company. Let's hire him, you know? And so be, like, like I would do Strappy regardless if I work there. If I got fired yet tomorrow, please don't fire me. I would still <laughs> use Strappy because it's actually a good product, you know? And the uh, cloud Strappy is coming. Um, I just posted the good. link to Natasha's uh, live, oh, nice. uh, the, the, the playlist where the, the name of the playlist, My Honest Web Development Journey, uh, former counselor turned junior software engineer. And essentially, again, you can go through uh, each and every video and it's very laid out and gives you yeah. exact kind of answer. At least when I watched it, I was like, I wish I would have seen this when I started uh, coding because yeah. it, it, it gives you a... Um, like it shows you the problems you're going to face and the solutions that she came up with. And they are, um, again, it's, 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 it's amazing. How it's pretty much like, you know, when I'm looking at it, I'm like, look, these are all the things that I'm trying to convey. So, um, yeah. yeah that's... And, and to me, those are the type of people you want to, whose videos you want to watch because they're in the trenches. They just walk the path. You know, they're not talking about something in theory. It's like they did this work. This is like the obstacles they ran into. This is how they solved them. So definitely uh, check out her videos. I think yeah, Alicia, uh, if, really, you, really, if you really, if you really. if you if you want to just if if you're wondering about the bootcamp, you can check out that playlist and to see like how you can do basically without it. Now again, is it like for every person to that they will just take few Udemy courses and they will be good to go? It depends on you know where you live it depends on the job market like again there's tons of things but in general just learning to code i think that um i would again probably think twice before giving my her just just you'll probably somebody. get the same ex the same experience as just send me your fifteen thousand dollars and i'm just like <laughs> And you're just going to send me a quote of the day every day. No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I actually know a lot of people. Now, just to take that, all joking aside, uh, to uh, kind of put the other side of it, I do know people personally that went to boot camps and got hired. But when they describe to me the process, it's like they still studied hard, like day and night. They put in the work. And this uh, girl, a friend of mine, uh, his uh, fiance, she literally sent out uh, 400 resumes before she got, and I think she only got five interviews. And out of those five interviews, she landed that job. And when I say 400 resumes, I'm not exaggerating for the sake of the story. She was like literally did that for months. And so to put into perspective, it takes massive amount of works. And so the argument would be if you do the same amount of study, regardless of yourself or boot camp, anybody sends out a resume or like you know 100 resumes and every time they update it to make it like the best resume they could possibly write out of 400 you will probably get some interviews and if you do well enough in the interviews based on what you've learned regardless of from the coding bootcamp or self-taught you going to get hired it's just it does become a numbers game but i think a lot of people underestimate what those numbers are i talked like three last now, I recent people I talked to, they, they were sending out, like Katya, she said she sent out a bunch of resumes, um, you know, a bunch of other people I know, like it's like two to 300 resumes. It's like for some ridiculous number. It is, it is just, that's the way it is. Yeah. And I mean, it's going to take, take time. That's also people sometimes, I know I keep hearing this all the time, but I don't have time. I need job right now. Well, the honest answer is you don't know whether you finished bootcamp or not and how long that's going to take. It might take a month, it might take two, it might take six months, it might take even longer. So to kind of, if you're scheduling your life kind of around that, that like I would be very careful as far as, you yeah. know, uh, when actually you'll get the job. Now yeah. I have one more, I have Jason. Uh, hey guys, I'm having trouble finding that first full stack job with just HTML, CSS, GS and React. A lot of places are also looking for Java or C Sharp Net. Should I learn one of those or stick with JS? So this is probably something that's going to overlap both of our answers. Uh, you did not mention, I, as for, I, I'm assuming when you say JavaScript, that also includes Node. If we're just talking about the uh, JavaScript stack, then, then if the Node is not included, then it's just a front end developer. That's key, point number one. Uh, Two more things that I want to mention. It's going to be harder to get your entry level as far as the full stack 
right out of the gate. That is even going to take longer. It's going to be easier to get a front end job or back end job and then uh, kind of migrate to the to the more full stack role. That's companies yeah. are going to be more more hesitant to 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 right away get you to the full stack. Uh, and I personally, again, this is I only can suggest I would not learn Java or C sharp just because uh, that's kind of if you have time and if you you know if you have spare time and you're like okay look i'm gonna learn but i personally would focus on on the, the javascript stack focus on becoming a better front-end developer and then if um, you know and try to look for those jobs and then eventually you you'll be able to migrate yeah i was going to add to that like getting a full stack development job or just back-end role is way harder and the interview process is much harder you actually have to know a lot uh, outside of just being able to create a backend, but you also have to know about databases, how to work with them, how to migrate data. You also need to be familiar with deployment. And because there's so many moving parts, it's really hard to get a job as a full tag, a full stack or backend developer, because I don't even think those jobs are considered like junior. Like, I don't think that's a junior position in terms of that in terms of the amount of experience that you need. And so in my journey, what I did, I literally focused on React and JavaScript tech. I got a job as a front-end developer. And once I was already working, I started slowly transitioning into back-end. And I still don't consider myself as a back-end developer. I'm like a front-end developer who knows a little bit about back-end just because of how much stuff there's to learn. So if your goal is to get a job, that's the path I would go because it is a little bit easier and a faster way to do it. And once you're working, then you could, you know, easily start learning whatever stuff you need because you don't have to worry about trying to get hired anymore because you already have a job. And in terms of like programming languages, unless you live in an area where you know 100% that JavaScript is not popular or React, um, and the only thing they do, let's say, is like for the sake of this example, is PHP, and there's zero jobs outside of PHP, then it makes sense to learn PHP or C Sharp, ASP.NET. But in most places, like JavaScript and React, there's enough popularity that if you just stick with it, you're going to get hired. So um, I felt the same way too, where I felt that um, because I'm not hired yet, maybe I'm missing like a secret key ingredient. Maybe it's like knowing a different language or what have you. And it's a, uh, and what I found out after making a bunch of mistakes is that, no, no, I just have to be better at the language that I am learning. So instead of like trying to learn something different, I just double down on JavaScript and React to a point where I'm creating better portfolio projects and people are like, oh, you know what you're doing? Yeah, we'll give you a job. And to, to, to add to that point, I mean, it's also going to depend highly on the, uh, your job market. And yeah, I'm just going to read one comment by Northern Chimp, uh, where um, he, uh, he or she uh, says, DevSmack did a survey about how many times people had to apply before they got hired the first time. Interestingly, the two extreme answers had the most votes. So I'm assuming probably the biggest one and the smallest one. And yes, it does depend. Like, for example, I've, the example I keep bringing it up, I had in my HTML and CSS course, a um, girl reached out and she's like, look, I took the course and then in three months I got hired uh, just by knowing HTML and CSS. And that, this is like the, the first person that I actually like learned that you can get hired in three months. Like usually that was like, okay, that's a pipe dream, you know. But yet she lives in, as far as I understand, she lived in South Korea. And as far as I know, that market is different, right? It's, it's, it's like there's more opportunities and you might be in a totally different place where you know, you need to spend that much more time on, on getting that job. Also understand, it's not like you come to the job market and then every company who needs a, let's say, dev is going to be at that point on the market. You might need to just wait for a month because, I mean, that's just the way it is. In a month time, then the, 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 the local companies are looking for that developer, right? You cannot predict. It's not like they, they all are going to have those jobs. It's, it's, you know, somebody leaves and then they look for a job. So that's definitely so going to be the case. I was just going to say, like, if you like definitely do uh, figure out like what the demand is in your area, like John says, uh, and then I see like Otaku Girl said for back and roll company has for C sharp and Java as mandate, which is interesting because I would really argue it really depends on 
like where you live and in most places like and i'm speaking from us for instance or even like i work for strappy like if someone showed up to strappy like i'm a c-sharp java developer they're not going to get hired because we use like node.js and so what i'm saying is there's definitely jobs for node.js there's definitely jobs uh like c-sharp there's definitely jobs at java and you have to decide which path you want to take and commit yourself to that path uh so i have uh and uh, luke stops by sometimes on this uh podcast too now uh, but uh, i talked to luke on my stream and i all about react i'm all about uh, javascript but he really likes asp.net and c sharp and so that's the path he took he was able to get hired and i took uh javascript and react i was able to get hired and then i know somebody else who is doing python they're able to get hired so if you're doing something that is like a popular language and is in demand in your market you're going to get a job the mistake that a lot of people make is uh and that's the mistake i made is i tried to learn react javascript and c sharp and asp.net that's too much stuff to learn you have to pick one and the other and stay on your path and you will get hired um unless like you like i don't like in us like definitely 100 percent you're going to get a job with java you're going to get a job with python you're going to get a job with c sharp you're going to get a job with node uh you just basically but pick one but i know in some countries they're like really big on php let's say and then you need to know php and that's kind of like the market there so just be aware of that yeah and that's the kind of advice that uh, we can also give that you need that it's this is why it's important for you to kind of like go out and meet the people who are in your community right that's the whole point why you would want to go to those coding meetups because i i I definitely have heard like also uh, people have emailed me let's say that they are from india and they say that every job that they go to you need to know the data structures and i like your point today during your live stream where you're like if you cannot build anything i wouldn't start yeah, doing the see. data structure and i 100 percent agree with you Makes but yes me. i i do believe like i i definitely think that uh i have no doubt that let's say what ankita is saying that you need to know the c-sharp and java like and in India, it might be, might be the case where yeah, they not, literally yeah, they I just think that might actually be the fact. Yeah, it's, so it, those are the more popular. But that's why kind of you, you kind of need to you need to make that decision based on uh, yeah. which job market you're at. Some and something that that I learned that, like for example, Nashville is like a .dot net kind yep. of town, right? So in there, yeah, most likely it's going to be easier if you follow uh, the the kind of I'll advice. Tell you a funny what, story. <laughs> Just, real Nashville. quick, sorry to interrupt. So I, I drove through Nashville and I was like, this is such a cool place. I would love to live here. And then I saw that exactly there's more C sharp and SP.net opportunities. I'm like, that's not me. I'm a JavaScript guy and React guy. I'm just gonna continue to Austin, Texas, where we have uh, plenty of React jobs. So that's what I did. Um so basically be mindful of uh the demand and the area that you live in. Um Yeah, one thing that I just wanna add, I also when we drove through, I really like Nashville, but it's one of those things when you start, for example, right now we were researching, we were thinking may maybe Nashville or whatever. And what you're noticing that it's you're not the only one who thinks like that, that it's, oh, it's a cool place. And and what's happening is more people move there. And the moment there's more influx of, of, of more people, they you get the same problems that you're technically running away from, right? So it's the higher yeah. rents, it's the, and Paul can testify this, it's the same thing happening with Austin. And so any other place, doing. yeah. So, like, last time I checked, like, uh, I read that uh, Florida, for example, added in one year 300,000 people. So, it's basically like a new city, just people yeah. move. Right? So, eventually, you'll have the same problems that you have somewhere else. So, that's just the reality. Like, like a lot of people think, like, oh, that's a cool place to be, so let me move there. And then, of course, once too many people move there and then you're doing yeah, i see why issues. you didn't want to move to texas because you don't want to be like one of those californians that invading texas oh i'm gonna be look i'm i am already <laughs> reading the how there's like the the local floridians who cannot stand the people who move there and i understand them but it's like like what can you do i mean you're, you're the same people think they don't like you in california because you're more, like pretty much you can't move anywhere without <laughs> yeah, like exactly. somebody just disliking I'm being you. unhappy as long yeah, as you're so. happy that's all that matters um, yeah and it's not like you're also i don't know like let's be honest it's not like i'm gonna 
you know, mingle with or socialize there with so many people in general. So I'm I'm fine with my little box in 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 Florida. So whatever it is, whatever. Yeah, it I'm is. gonna have to come visit you for sure. Yes, um, yes, yes. <laughs> Paul yeah. says that, and then next thing no, 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 you no, no, know, no, 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 no. <laughs> like I just you know California. You know, you were in LA too. It's like from all the California places, like LA folks. Um, I've been to LA once. Yeah. Um, actually like twice maybe like but this is before i knew you and man like it's so expensive there like it's crazy it is and yeah. that's why it's funny when when people say like oh florida is getting expensive yes it is getting expensive but it's nowhere <laughs> near the what the california levels are and this yeah, is something i'm oh, sorry i was gonna say it's so expensive but it's not that much nicer la <laughs> it's no it's it's uh <laughs> As far as the weather, you can make an argument that, that it's... Like, even just the city, like, what's so cool about it? LA, nothing. Yeah, exactly. So, it's like, uh, no, I'm no, just no. kidding. Thank you, Jason. We got $5 nice. in Super Chat. So, yes, now we can... Now, now we can... Now, now we can, like, buy food for pigeons in LA. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you for support. Uh, thank you that... Uh, uh, it's great to hear that uh, you find it useful. Um, I'm here. Uh, I have, okay, we got another comment. Um, Paul, <laughs> lol, Paul, that is funny. People trying to avoid Texas. Um, yes and no. I mean, it's kind of like if you're really digging into this topic, if you really want to know the, the, the results of my... If, let's say, if you're getting the job locally somewhere there, then uh, Texas is a better option right? Because it is cheaper than California, but the salary is bigger than, let's say, Florida. So that's just a side note. Wow. Nice. If, if you're, if you're thinking well, about, I... yeah, because the Florida has mostly hospitality jobs. So that's what I'm saying. So the, the pay yeah. is there lower as well. So that's something to keep in mind. Yeah. What I was uh, talking to a friend of mine, he says, because of all the prices of uh, property going up everywhere pretty much, uh, eventually at some point, um, in terms of cost of living, um, California, Texas, and Florida, I'll be like indistinguishable, you know, that's mm. what kind of he was saying, but you do want to live in a place where hopefully the salary is a little bit higher. And, uh, I know in Florida, the salaries are not the same as they are in Austin, like you were mentioning. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's, it's, it's this like, look, it's, it's first of all like prices are rising everywhere it's just it depends where it was the starting point right so of course for somebody who's you know who's used to um like living in like having a cheaper kind of uh, more affordable lifestyle then of course it's annoying that you know you have a bunch of people moving there and and we can go on and on about the reasons why people move let's say to 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 like many reasons why people move to florida or texas or whatever so it's um yeah, but but that's 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 yeah. I don't know. It's just one of those. I don't know. I saw that movie. Was it like 2012? Was that the name of the movie where like 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 California just fell into the ocean and some like yeah, because <laughs> there's nothing to fall into. You know what I mean? And so that's that that was my logic. You know, um, so no, it's but, uh, it's definitely just again, it's, it's, it depends. But there's a reason why people, like a bunch of people from California, move to to Texas and uh, and Florida. And again, if you're if you're planning to live work actually in Texas, Texas, then it's a better option because it's you'll you'll get the bigger salary, essentially. Yeah. Than, than but if you work in remote, then it's like if you're you working your remote, then then you technically can pick matter. which which whichever whichever state yeah, makes. They the also most don't sense. have like state income tax in Florida, right? Both of them, yeah. Both of them yeah, don't so have that. So yes, that's yeah. That's 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 a good benefit. It's a benefit. yeah. No, I mean, and the reason why you know many people retire there is because your uh, basically investments don't get um, taxed. So wow. that's why. You know, somebody once they once they get to retirement, the four hundred one k or whatever it is. I don't know. I don't have. I'm just one, gonna but... use your address as my like, <laughs> like when people... I'm ready to retire. <laughs> but I don't. I don't. Th I think it's the same in uh, in Texas. It's just the difference yeah, is no, that in Florida, you yeah. you can actually like you know you get more. I guess 
beaches and water or whatever. Yeah. So we yeah, yeah, got yeah, another and you got more super alligators chat. as well. Alligators, in your <laughs> alligators and snakes and whatever. We got another we super got chat. Yeah, nice. Thank you, John, for your courses. Those are scary. Good. Thank you. Thank you for support. And uh, super glad that uh, you find it useful. Um, let me read two things from as far as the questions that I've got throughout the week. And then and then we'll see what's happening in the chat. And maybe we can um, see how close we are to a... And uh, hi, John. Your tutorials are great. I have a question from you. I know front-end materials also React.js, but for back-end, what do you suggest? I know C-sharp and JavaScript good, so between a, a, ASP.NET Core and Node.js, which one you suggest to learn? And is it better as a front-end developer find a job to start to learn back-end or first become a full-stack developer then find a job for back-end or full-stack developer positions? I would say definitely first find a job for the front-end and then as far as that back end, like we just talked about it, depending on your area. So, you know, which, whichever is the, um, whichever language is the most popular in the area, I would go with that one. And, um, uh, yeah, pretty much we just covered that. So, yeah. And just like to, I give you like firsthand experience. I talk to people like at the company I work for in terms of like knowing what I went through, like getting hired as a front end facing developer versus someone who would be back end the interview process is way harder for back end development uh, for sure and definitely takes longer and kind of like we covered the topic but say it again i don't think there's like junior developer back end jobs i don't think that's a thing just be based on the complexity of what you have to know strappy had strappy had a junior back end developer it's not junior i saw the interview question so it's hard <laughs> like you basically had to <laughs> build your own back end with like <laughs> custom resolvers and controllers and also it's not if you don't know how to do that you probably not but with do strappy well with strappy you need it or you need it with uh with node so as uh like for, for like uh so you need to know koa actually mm. because we use koa as a back end uh framework um so i and obviously like if like it it similar to like node like because it is node there's just a framework that's lighter than express and does some things better like for instance express a lot of people complain about the callback hell uh, and koa solves that uh issue uh so you literally would have to create a back end uh with some specifics using koa um to get a, a job and this is like something that like I would say like for front end development, it's like easy like to create an awesome looking design that looks pretty, it has some functionality you can understand. And what's tough with like back end, there's nothing to look at except the code, right? Because you're writing the back end, the API. And so you literally like have to, uh, outside of creating the thing that they ask you to do, be able to speak about it because there's nothing really like visually to show for it and a lot of the stuff you're always dealing with like well how do you get data from a database you know um you need to know how to do that like what do you like and you know like how do you do that what do you use um you know how do you set up controllers how how do you use middleware to do like stuff and like it's just way more complex so i'm always like airing like on the side of like if you try to break into the field and your goal is to get hired as quickly as possible start with front end now if you're young you don't care you want to be a back developer just know that it's going to take you longer and you need to learn a lot more stuff yeah i'm really apologize but i'll have to cut this one pretty much right now because my child is waking up and i need to so, pick it up under yeah. being a parent <laughs> you know when duty calls you just gotta go yeah yeah my, i really apologize but i i, I need to run <laughs> Uh, so it was awesome to see everybody and it was always an awesome chat and uh, we will do uh, one thing though next the week it's going to be on Friday simply because I, I have some responsibilities on Saturday so yes we'll switch basically it's going to be Friday at uh, two o'clock. Yeah, let me just quickly answer the question for Alcom. He says, Paul, what kind of application did you build with React that got you hired? I'm building a full stack shoe 
or with React front end PHP for back end? Is that a good project? I think that's a good project. Uh, I didn't go as deep as you did. I didn't create my own back end, but I created a React front end and my back end was strappy. And that was enough to kind of showcase the functionality of, you know, showing that I understand authentic authentication and full cloud functionality. So I think you're on the right track. But yeah, man. All right. Thanks, I guess, everyone, John. And then Benjamin just did a super sticker. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Benjamin, for 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 donating. And thanks everyone for showing up. And it was an awesome chat. And we'll pick it up from so much from, from here on next week. From thank here. you. Next bye week, bye. Same time, same channel. Bye everyone. Thanks, John. See ya. See you bye bye. Later.